Do you want to talk about the thorns? Because I don't know if you can, if you can see at home, I still have a couple cuts and scrapes on my face. Um, I got, I got destroyed out there. So I feel like out of maybe everyone in the field, I would probably have the best uh, insight <laughs> on some of the worst spots you could put yourself on this Was it, course. Were the thorns that you went into, were they like you threw a really bad shot and so it's in the thorns or were you like inside the circle like the Joel Freeman situation? Because I think those are two different I situations when it comes to a course. What stuff. hole was he inside the circle and in thorns? A hole 11 is what he what has been claimed. On the hole right 11. side, right side of 11. You can tell he's in a thick bush. Nine. T- the right side of 11. Yes. Or oh, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah hole, hole eleven was the one that had like the little Y tree, and you had to throw it through like a little layup forehand to the right, and then a lot of people were throwing like a spike hyzer up and over the up and over. Um, yeah, I mean, it wasn't that thick over there. That's where the it that's where it occurred. Um, that I mean, there was there was mul- there there was I'll say this. There were multiple occasions, like mm-hmm. more than eight times, that had I thrown that sh- had I thrown that shot that I did in the tournament in a practice round, there is no way in heck I'm trying to get in there and throw a shot. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm, like I'm trying to find a stick and I'm trying to like knock it out and grab it and get out of there and just yeah. throw you know where my other shot is, but. I'm in a tournament and I have to get in there. Now, do I think that should be part of disc golf? I I don't think that's a side that from a player standpoint that we want to play in. And I don't think it really adds anything from a viewer standpoint of where like someone throws a shot and then comes out and they're like pulling. I mean, there was one shot I did where I, I like got like four thorns in my hand. Cause like once I released, I like I was literally in the thorn situation. So like I just did a little, like a high chop forehand and just barely caught the thorns in front of me and just had like four of them in there. So I don't think, could be wrong. Maybe people listening right now are going to be like, oh no, we want to see you bleed. We want to <laughs> see blood. Um, but to me, there, there, I threw the shot in there. Yeah. Right. Like I, uh, if I would have thrown a better shot, I wouldn't be in there. So at a certain point, I'm like, eh. But, you know, here I'm at W.R. Jackson. And again, this might be more of like a, just like a location thing of where like where we're playing in W.R. Jackson, there aren't thorns. And at this other course, there are. I wish there was like some sort of mosquito or something that you could release that just like eats thorns. Yeah. Because I love the rough at that course. Like if you got off the fairway at that course, which I did a lot, it was at certain points, it was, like, impossible to say par. Like, you were not, especially if it was, like, a par three and you got off the fairway, you know, you weren't in circle two and you weren't, you know, 100, you are 150 feet away. Like, it was nearly impossible some spots to get into circle two, which I like because yeah. it's, like, you, th- you threw that bad shot, you should get penalized. But if there was a way of making it just as hard without the thorns, I'm all for that. I think the biggest difference between the two courses is from what I understood, the course you played at Music City, correct me if I'm wrong, was like a temp course of sorts. Like it's a fairly new put in course, right? Yes, it's, a, it's a temporary baskets. And um, I guess they're pulling the baskets like a week after we left. Yeah. So they might, I, yeah. So I think that's the biggest difference is like a course like WR Jackson's been played a lot. So you can get rid of the thorns and the foot traffic keeps them down versus a course like that it's hard to maintain the thorns if it's not getting regularly played because there's like, as a course develops, that's something with like new courses. It's always the undergrowth and thorns, poison Ivy, all that type of stuff. Like you can kill it. You you can get rid of it, but it's going to keep coming back unless it's like regularly played. So that's just something that like older courses will have more developed rough to where it's made up of big trees or some strategic little trees, but there's not a lot of like undergrowth thorns, stuff like that you have to get into because they're regularly being trampled. So once they're down, they're down type thing. Yeah, that makes, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. I think, I think that is 
the rough that I like the most to play out of is the one that is still very difficult to like maneuver to get out because you have all the little trees and branches and all that stuff to deal with. But I like to have like, you know, no thorns or like you said, the underbrush. If there's a way to just like force fire all the underbrush out, um, I, I think I think that would be the best scenario for the player standpoint as far as just like, you know, getting in there. Now, if we want to talk about the Joel Freeman situation, it, it was when I first heard about it, I was like, well, that's kind of that kind of sucks. Like, why didn't why didn't the people on his card tell him like, hey, if you do that, we're gonna stroke you? Because um, I guess what I guess what I heard and again, this is like from a couple different people. So take that for what you want. But what I heard is he was like trying to get to his lie mm-hmm. and said something verbally out loud of like, I can't get to my lie. Yes. And then proceeded to kind of just keep going back and back until he could throw a shot. Well, he got the group to come look at it. Okay. So on coverage, you can see Nathan Queen and Dickerson them looking at the lie. The okay. um, the issue was because the issue here is the two people who are mainly in the story. One being Joel Freeman. He posted like kind of a cryptic. You didn't get much detail from Instagram post. Basically, just being like mm. it was unfortunate. Let's just move on. It is what it is. Nathan Queen yeah. was doing the commentary. So the only like fully told out side of the story you hear is Nathan Queen's, which is right. This probably, the truth is probably somewhere in the middle, but Nathan Queen basically said. What did he say? He said that he walked up and immediately, and you can see it on coverage. He's like, yeah, right here I'm saying I could get to that lie in 15 seconds. And so then what happened is the whole card walks away. And it appeared that there wasn't really an answer given to Joel yet. And so what Nathan says is they walked away and they were still talking about whether that was an unplayable lie or not. So they hadn't given him an answer. And that's when he marked farther behind taking casual relief and through. Yeah. So to me, it just seemed like this misunderstanding it on Joel's mis- part. It, was a, it seemed like a miscommunication thing of where yeah. he, never, he never got confirmation because what I was told was they, they assumed because he took it back there that he was just taking it unplayable. Yes, they thought he was taking the stroke. So, yeah, they thought because they, he, because they basically didn't make it sound like it was unplayable. Or not, sorry. They, they didn't make it sound like it wasn't something. Because the, the only time you can do that is like if your disc is like up against a tree. Yeah, like if right? you physically like, can't get to your disc, you can take relief like, back. Yes. And yeah. so I think they saw that, saw like, ah, we didn't, they weren't like, oh yeah, man, there's no, way. cause really if it's a thorn bush, you can get your foot in there. Yeah. You can find as a that, way as, to get as in there. As much as it sucks. Trust me. I have scrapes all over my body to prove it. It sucks, but I don't think in the rules and maybe again, this is where it's like, I wish there wasn't thorns because you can't put something in the rules of where it's like, well, that's well, where like, the tournament director. Like thor- it can't yeah. blame relief, casual relief from all thorns. So that could be something said at the meeting where you, you get casual relief backwards of I all thorns. Or you like can also that, designate though. specific ones. So you can say the thorns to the I right like of that. whole green of whole eleven. Certain, you get relief yeah. of, from that. You can say that. Because so that's kind of the, the only solution that could have happened. I d I don't like the uh, you know, I don't like the thorn situation because it, it it also brings into my thing of like, hey, like we need to be able to get like relief off of like fire ant piles and like other like gopher holes and all that stuff. But the problem is when you when you start saying like just disc golf courses aren't maintained well enough to where stuff can be easily like, oh, that is definitely a hole because it's surrounded by grass and that's a hole. And it's that, the same thing with thorns is like th- there's such a you can you can abuse that rule yeah. if you're like you get relief off of thorns. So regardless, they all thought he was taking unplayable. They get to the tee. They ask him what he got. He said four. They're like, isn't it five? And I think that's how the story goes. Now, there was another in- incident, too, which this I didn't one I know didn't this hear. 
Yeah. Yeah. This I didn't even know this after was, we did the podcast. The free, the, another Joel Freeman. Yeah. Whole right? 17 or whatever. Whole 17. So I didn't even know this was a rule. So for everyone listening right now, this is, this is kind of an interesting rule. And again, this is where I think the PDGA is making rules for all tournaments. And this is where I think the Disc Golf Pro Tour needs to separate a little bit from the PDGA and say, hey, some of your rules make a lot of sense for flex starts and make a lot of sense for C tiers, but don't make sense for the Disc Golf Pro Tour. And this is one of those rules. Now, it was it was played the right way, so that was good. But basically, hole 17, uh, you can either go up the middle. You got trees on the left, OB on the right. You can either sh- throw like an up-the-gut shot or you can throw a big hyzer out of uh, over out of bounds and then have it come back inbounds. That's what Joel did. His disc never came back inbounds. And so he ended up going up to where his disc was. And in the PGGA rule book, it does say that the tournament director essentially has the right to say how they want that the out of bound will be played to where you either play it like how 99.9% of us play it, where it's where it last was in bounds. That's where you take it. Or he has an option of basically saying like, you can bring where your disc ends up. You can bring it in uh, perpendicular to the out of bounds and take your stroke and play it from there. Fascinating. Uh, this is also, this is also a rule that the USGA has um, in golf as well. And again, this is to speed up pace of play at the lower level, because if you have a hole that requires people to throw out of bounds and have it come back in, instead of having people just stand there and continuing to throw and throw and throw, this would speed up the pace of play. Right. And that's, I think, why the rule is created. Does it make sense for the pro tour? Absolutely not. Tournament director came out, told him, no, you can't do that for this tournament. Where so I don't know where I've never heard that rule before. I'm looking at the OB Joel rule Free- now. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not second guessing Joel Freeman at all. The guy knows the rule book better than anyone else. I'm second guessing him, but I'm. I'm gonna. I'm reading the I, OB rule right now, and I'm gonna just see. It's, I'm telling you, it's in there. I'm. It's, I'm looking at it. I'm, I'm gonna look for it right now while we keep talking, because it basically says a player's disc who's out of bounds receives one penalty throw. The player may play the next throw from the previous lie or a lie designated by a marker disc placed on the playing surface up to one meter away from the point where the disc was last in bounds. At the director's... Uh... Got to be like an oh, you're right. Talk. At the director's discretion, the player may additionally choose to play the next throw from within the designated drop zone, or a lie designated by a marker disc placed on the playing surface up to one meter away from the point of out-of-bounds line nearest the position of the disc. That must be there a new rule. That's fascinating. So it's at the director's yeah. discretion, though. So the TD would have had to, same thing as the casual relief for the Thorns. TD would have Correct. had to have said that before the tournament. I'm telling you, Joel Freeman knows the rule book better than anyone I've at, ever met. Knowing the rule book can save you a stroke or two at least a turn, maybe even a round. 100%. Yeah. 100%. But that's where I what think. Were you going to say, Silas? Silas, yeah, what were you going to say? said someone in the chat. Oh, no. I was just saying, Todd, Todd said he looked it up. I, he said where to find it. But yeah, I found, found it. it. I found so it. you're good. It was the next few points down. Oh, nice. That must have been added recently because do you, that's fascinating. Do you want to you want to hear my crazy rule story? Let's hear it. of how I how I stroked myself. Mm, okay, so, so uh, yeah, well, maybe bad <laughs> bad use of the word. Um, how how I took a worse score than I should have. There you go. Um, so this was a hole that. Uh, most players you saw throw like a chip forehand and then like another chip forehand, but you could throw like up and over the trees, like immediately off the tee pad. This was like a whole eight, I believe whole eight. You could throw like this high Annie. Uh, I don't know if it was on coverage, but Garrett Gurthy threw a shot like pin high on this par four mm. ridiculous shot, but you can throw a high Annie flex and flex it like over and get way over there and then have like a straight 200 foot shot. So that is what I did the first two days. Uh, And just easy birdie, easy birdie. One of the days I got up, I was throwing my Janice Thrasher. And one of the days the wind kind of like knocked it over more into a, like a sky roller. 
And so it hit and rolled like another 150 feet straight. And there, it was probably like 20 or 30 feet short of these white stakes. Now, once I saw that, I was like, okay, are these out of bounds for us? Because I was like, I'm pretty sure when I looked at the T sign, there's like no OB on this course, like or on this hole. And so I really looked at the caddy book and yes, lo and behold, it says OB over the fence, which is like so far right and like short that these, this is obviously not talking about that. And then uh, there was no other OB on the course. These white stakes were for horse 17. So if you went too far on hole 17, that's these white stakes came into play because they kind of caddy the two holes kind of caddy corner together. So I'm like, all right, so I'm fine. If I somehow end up going past, I'm fine. Well, lo and behold, round three, uh, my disc does the same thing, turns into a sky roller and rolls like another 50 feet further than before. And I get in the middle of the storm bush past these white stakes. Now, in my head, I'm like, like, this is an OB. I know it's not OB. This is an OB. But, you know, I talked to the car by people on my card and I'm like, guys, there's no OB on the T sign. Uh, I'm like, there's no way that this can be OB. And they're like, yeah, we think that you should just play a provisional just to be safe. And I'm yeah. like, all right. I was like, fine, I'll play a provisional. So I take my one meter in and I end up because I take my one meter in, I'm no longer in this massive thorn bush and I throw them, get freaky up to like five feet. Okay. So I'm like, all right, well, that's, that's a par for my provisional. Let me just, let me just, uh, so now in my head, I'm like, I, I'm going to see if I can get like a crazy flex forehand, like stand still again. I'm like got thorns all around me. So like my range of motion is very minimal. I'm like, can I get a crazy flex forehand all the way up to the basket and maybe get birdie on this hole? Cause I'm like, this is the disc I'm actually using. Throw it, go straight ultimate Frisbee style, nose up, hyzers over into this other thorn bush. <laughs> have, have no shot. So I just chuck something up there, get to about, 30 32 feet and now i'm walking up being like okay what the heck and i missed the putt mm. and which also puts me in a really weird spot because i was i was my other shot was also out because everyone else parked it so like now i'm like that uh, i have to i'm like it was really weird because like i need to get that putter but i need to mark this disc and mark that disc it was a weird situation but I ended up parring on the on my provisional, yeah, and bogeying on my not provisional. Mm. So so now they're like, all right, well, what do you want to take? And I'm like, well, I I gotta take the five because that's what I think. Like I don't think I should that should be ob. Yeah. But now in my head, I'm like, crap. At the end of the round, I gotta talk to the tournament director. And I got to try to talk my way into trying to figure out to make that OB. <laughs> because that will save me a stroke. <laughs> and, and uh, yeah, so I talked to him. I'm like, hey, that those OB lines on the back of 17, is that OB for hole eight as well? And they're like, no, that's just for 17. And I was like, oh, okay. Oh, ah, dang right. it. <laughs> well, screw me. Um, but that brings an interesting topic. I don't think that should happen. I think if yeah. there's OB that it needs to be OB for all holes playing around it and not just like, well, typically, that, typically that what it is, happen. is like you have course OB. So like there's a barbed wire fence or a property line and yep. you define that like at independence park, for instance, in Bedford, there's the entrance gravel road. And so on all holes, it says it at the top of the caddy book. When I write it, all holes, gravel road and beyond OB. So it doesn't matter where yep. you find it. Cause it plays in a lot. But then there's some, like hole 13, for instance, uh, which I might actually, that's a pretty bad example. But there's sometimes a hole where it, that you're, it'd be OB on the hole to protect a different fairway. But yeah. like that fairway doesn't necessarily need protecting back, if that makes sense, like or whatever. Yeah. So sometimes you put OB just on like hole four, fence on the right's OB. But then on the other side of the fence, you know, 200 feet farther away is hole seven. So you don't even think about the fence protecting hole four. And exactly. so then you don't put it there. And if you don't put it as an OB for a hole, that's why you have to put like course OB as like 
all gravel road and beyonds ob for all holes because if you forget it on a hole then it just isn't ob on that hole so then you might Correct. have a player playing over a property line or something which they're right in the tournament but you're like that's my fault as a tournament director so in your yeah. situation i don't exactly know what that line defined but if it's something where it sounds like it's just something where they didn't expect it, a it shot did, to get it, there it defined it defined the back of hole 17 so like 15 feet behind hole 17's basket was ob yeah and it was this it was like 15 posts and the posts they just had them keep going left out into the field and that field was like you know 500 feet straight off of hole eight's uh tee pad yeah but like i said most people that play hole eight just throw a forehand chipper 300 feet and then throw like it's a it's shaped like an l yeah. So you throw a forehand chipper 300 feet straight and then shoot one straight across the other direction. Yeah. So, so the team yeah, was the probably direct, like, how on earth did you even get there? Correct. Correct. <laughs> no, there, there's no way a shot should ever go that direction. But that being said, um, I was thinking for you know all courses in the future, any OB for a hole should be OB. That, that should be an OB line for every hole. Yeah. I mean, there's probably very hole. few it'd probably be easier and safer to have to declare the opposite of what we have to declare now. Like declare the line on hole four is not OB on hole five versus Correct. having to say like probably this line a OB. lot less work. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because like realistically, most OB lines are like protecting a fairway from one another or something, or just de mm -hmm. like defining a line in general and like a field to make a hole harder or whatever it may be to where, if there is another hole that you're like, there's no way a player does it. If a player did it, that's another thing you learn. Like people learn TD and events. It's happened to me many times. I've like the first few tournaments I ran, I was like, okay, I don't need to put this in the caddy book. Cause there's no chance a shot goes there. Like there's no chance yeah. that happened. It will always happen.